This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 594 for March 11th, 2019. Use them or infuse them. Hit that light level! Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. Your name could be following Moonpeer. You could be third chair here on TVGP. Uh, if you're interested, applications are open now. Fill in a little bit of information about yourself, uh, what you like, what your shoe size is, not like that. Um, what's, but, your, what's your mother's maiden name? What's yeah, your social security number? Your the, the three numbers in the back of your credit card. Um, just real basic info. Um, and uh, if you look at our Twitter account, at TVGP, there's a link there. I've been tweeting it out about once a day. Um, go put it in there. We'll probably keep it open for about another week. Um, we got a, a good number of applicants so far. But if you want to be on the show, um, no prior experience needed, anything like that. But uh, go put your application in, and we'll be in touch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's all the business stuff we have. So let's go right into what you've been playing this past week, Moonpeer. Uh, let's start with the common one, Apex Legends. I like yep. Apex Legends. Apex Legends is still a good game. Yep. Um, the new gun is interesting, the whatever it's called. And I, despite being completely out of touch with game news, I await with bated breath the chance to support them with a season pass. Um, which, mm, yeah. Uh, depending on the how it works, we will be probably getting two in this household. So sure, should be fun. The 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 uh, the battle pass for. Um, Fortnite seems like it's a really great value to pretty Rocket, typically. The Rocket League one is the same. Oh yeah, they have one too. Yeah, so I'm hoping that they uh, that um, respawn follows on on top of that, just m- making sure that it's not a ton of money, but the the value is pretty clearly there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I played a whole bunch of Apex Legends this well early this week. I didn't play it towards the latter part of this week because. I don't want to play video games right now. Hashtag spoiler alert. Yeah, man, I don't... I, it, <laughs> it's been another week like that for me. Apologies to anyone watching the live stream or the video. Skype is being stupid today. So uh, Moon is going to be coming and going <laughs> a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like, I just... I keep sitting down, I'll fire up something, and be like, no, nah, I don't know. Nope. Yep. Load up something else. Nope. Yeah, I'll play a Bonnie nope. of Isaac daily. Uh, that's enough Isaac for right now. Okay, sure. Yep. Um, for me, it was load up about four games, um, one after the other, close them all, then switch over to Hulu and watch more Elementary. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> um, or last night's case, watch Alien. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Apex Legends played a fair bit of that early this week with specifically calling out community members, Monkey Senior and Late Elf. Uh, played a couple of, I think, like, over two days, like, probably about three hours with each of them. Nice. And it was one of those things where it's like you just start and then you just don't stop. Because that's how Apex Legends is. Yeah. Um, the story goes on. The uh, We wrote... We wrote like it. <laughs> Please the go listen rogue, to We Rogue Like It. Yep. The roguelike, um, which is very intro friendly. Like I've recommended this as a step one in the roguelike family. Right. Uh, I have two achievements left in the game. Wow. So, not only is it an easy game to play for me, but it's also a very good switch-off-my-brain kind of game. Right. So, because of that, it's been my go-to (laughs) switch-off. It's probably the one watching the archive video or the live stream. (laughs) It finally caught up to Moonpeer. And if if Skype isn't going to show, then, you know, we've got got some sound. Hi, my name is Moonpeer, and I'm a zero one. Yep. That's your uh, so sailing yeah. number. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the story goes on. It's been my my switch off my brain and pull the trigger a bunch to slash easy enemies to bits. Right. Literally, the last two things I need to do is collect a hundred percent of the items. Stop me if that sounds familiar for other games <laughs> achievements. Hmm. <laughs> Weird. Like a real platinum god or something like that. Hmm. Yep. And uh, the other achievement I need is <laughs> um, summon our Lord and Savior Pectoron. <laughs> 
I already like this game. Um, which is funny because that's an item you get. You basically, and you're, now I really am a zero one. It's great. Yeah. Um, when you are heading through the game, you can collect, you collect items and some of them are dumb and some of them are funny. One of them is called Termovision. And if you hold the trigger, it turns the screen red and then does tar- like crosshair targeting, oh, like okay. Terminator. Um, and then you let go of the trigger and you just basically go and attack them all really quickly. I'm surprised that's not an item in Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> yeah, it's full of stupid references like that. And some of them are really great. Some of them are just dumb. But there's three familiar items you can get, which is a bunny. Which mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure is a reference to the English comedian group that I hate. Everyone in America loves them. Life of Brian. Oh, um, Monty Python. Yes. I'm pretty sure the bunny is a reference to that because it's like the legendary bunny of Hop Diggity or something like that. Mm. Um, and you can collect that, a woodpecker, and two turtle doves. <laughs> okay. And if you collect all three on the same quote-unquote run, you they all merge together to form one item, which is Lord Pectoron, who is apparently an absolute beast. Right. So... That's the he is counted as an item to collect, and I am at ninety eight percent on my items collected. Oh so man! All I need to do is get the three items on a run, and I'll summon him, and it will be fine. Man, the bright side about this is is you can essentially do a loop around where you can start again and hold certain items over by choosing which level you want to start. Ah, uh, right. So all I need to do is not be stupid and not die, and then <laughs> just run oh, through that's it. All? And <laughs> yeah, that's all. Uh, so, I mean, I'm playing it. It's fun. It will be uninstalled when I when I have those last two achievements. But you know what? It's a good, stupid, switch my brain off and just relax kind of game. Yeah. Where I can have a full blown conversation with my wife while running around a room, just smashing yeah. the trigger as fast as I can. Um, thanks again, Monkey Senior. Um, I did mention it first time, but I did play some Katamari Rerolled on the PC. Oh yeah. Because if you want to play some relaxing games where you don't have to think too much. Katamari, because why not? God, that game is so good. Yes, it is. I, I don't really want to say much more other than that because that game is so good. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think the, the positive and the negative of the re-roll remaster is it's still the first Katamari game. It's mm-hmm. it's still really good, runs at 1080, or it runs at 60 frames, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good game. It's got that music. What yeah. more do you need? Uh, my final game this week. The game I will actually talk a fair bit about. Okay. Because you might want to uh, just click your mouse over there, do a little thing on the We Rogue Like It tab. Okay. And you might want to add in a little game called Distrust. Distrust. Okay. Which is a game inspired by, literally, the first line in the description, inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing. Okay, go on. <laughs> Okay, so there's the bait on the hook for you. Yeah. Let me throw out. I'm gonna do that thing where you put some bait in the in the slingshot and you fire it into the water and get you even more interested. Mm-hmm. It's an isometric, mm-hmm. top down, uh-huh. survival based, mm-hmm. roguelike game. Okay, I feel like with every word the uh, the Vince McMahon gif pr- <laughs> progresses. <laughs> <laughs> I've just fallen over like, ooh. Note to self, I need to go and make that today yeah. at some point. Um, yeah, this, it's a really interesting game. It's hard to describe, apart from the categories I just filed it under. It's an Eastern Block game, so let's get that out the way straight away. Okay. Um, if one of the tool tips in the loading screens is, yo, the people who made this live in Siberia, so the cold is real. Wow, Okay. So, when I say Eastern Block, I really mean Eastern Block. Right, all the way over there. Yes. Um, So, you are polar explorers, essentially. You are in a helicopter heading towards a base. The helicopter gets some weird bright light in it, and the Mm -hmm. helicopter crashes, and then you have to go and explore this polar base to try and find out what happened, what's going on, so on and so forth. You have... I started with two survivors. You start with two. And it's essentially, it's a survival game. You have warmth, you have stamina, and you have hunger. Okay. And as you're going through these buildings and this, like, this Arctic wilderness kind of thing, 
you go into the buildings, you do a little explore, exploring XCOM style, where you like open up all the boxes and get the wood and the, and the coal and stuff like that. When you go to sleep, that's when it summons the monsters. Oh no. Um, I'm actually watching a trailer right now, and this this looks, this reminds me in a a positive way of some of the '90s games like um, Crusader No Remorse and stuff like that, where it's this like this cool th- sort of pseudo 3D isometric thing. This looks mm-hmm. cool. It reminds me like just from the crispness and the actual art style. It reminds me a lot of Icewind Dale. Yeah, it's this really yeah. crisp, like snowy looking environment. Um, the art is actually really fantastic in it. Each survivor has their own special skills. So far, I have two or three, and I unlocked a fourth one while playing the game already. So wow. I know that when it comes to restarting the game, I can choose another survivor. Oh, okay. Because what it looks like it does is it looks like it has zones. So it's zones one through six, mm-hmm. and you have to make your way through those zones to progress, to, I'm assuming, to the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Every time you go to sleep, there's a chance that the game will summon these monsters who are brought into this world by the beta waves of people asleep. If you don't go to sleep, your people will understandably suffer the consequences of fatigue and exhaustion. And in a survival game, you need to sleep. Right. So it's this balance of trying to get your guys in the best shape they can be, solve the puzzle that's needed to get through the exit gate to the next zone, and at the same time, keep everybody alive and survive against these monsters who, so far, you start off, when you start off, the one monster that you get is vulnerable to light. So you go inside a building, you turn on the generator, and the building produces light. The monster mm. doesn't like that, so it will circle the building while damaging itself. Okay. You can go out and actually look at it and point your flashlight at it, and it will kill it a lot quicker. But why As- bother? Yeah, but why bother? As the wind picks up here, something. Yeah, I was, like this. I was like, man, is that one of your cats trying to get in again? No, it's just the nope. wind. Nope, that's just New York wind. Yeah. I did one run it today, so I've only played this game a little bit. I strongly recommend we stick it in the We Rogue Like It list. I just put it in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because this game looks like it's going to be a run-based roguelike. Right. With puzzle and survival mechanics and everything else all included in it at the same time. There's a bunch of status effects, bleeding, so on and so forth. Like oh, the yeah. usual survival stuff. My wife bought this game for me. I'm not sure what that says. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> According to her, it was because it said the thing, the first thing, the first line. Of right, the, the thing roguelike. Yes. So this game, honestly, I've only played like two hours of it, but I'm actually really, really enjoying it. And... Sometimes when you're not feeling video games, you need something that just comes out of the blue and is a bit of a surprise. Yeah. And this is pretty good for me. I've got so yeah. many games installed and stuff like that. And it's like, it's not, it's the, the the dichotomy of the how many things I can play versus wanting to play. Yeah. And you know what? This came along. It's a small install. It's just jump in, give it a couple of, give it a go and see how it feels. And so far it feels good. And it's got multiple endings. And it's also got madness features in it because one of my people went mad. The trailer says it has co-op too. That I did not know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That 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 sounds really cool. Mm-hmm. I really like the I really like distrust like a lot. Yeah. I'm amazed at how much like immediately it was speaking to me in a way that the thing from the PlayStation Two era just did not. Uh, it is only twelve dollars on sale right now. Mm-hmm. Go pick it up. Give it a shot. Actually, it looks like it's part of the fanatical survival bundle. What is this? What? <laughs> looks like there's a bundle of survival games right now, and Distrust is one of those. Deadlight is another. Tharsis, and that is four dollars on um fanatical. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, fanatical.com. Okay. Part of yeah. their, one of their bundles. It's, a, it, so far, it's a very, very good game. And I'm honestly torn now. Do I keep playing it or do I put it to the side and wait for the rogue like it? I'd say keep playing it, man. Yeah. I, I feel like, like if you, if you, you don't feel like playing a lot of games and this game 
is really fun to play, yeah, play that game. Yeah, it's not like we don't have 100 games in the Wii Rogue like <laughs> list. Yeah, it was, uh, we were talking to someone uh, this weekend and said, you know, this I have about 100 uh, games, so you have a 1% chance for the next episode for this to come up. So yep. keep rolling those dice. <laughs> uh, but no, Distrust, uh, that's the last thing I've been playing this week because meh. Yeah. So. Yeah. What have you been playing, Boston? Uh, I played a little bit more Darkest Dungeon. Um, <clears throat> of course, I'll, you did. I'm I'm still in the phase of, you know, leveling up my my team, trying to find a, a good couple teams there. Um, mm-hmm. I did try to do one more Farmstead run. So I did the first run, which is basically try and defeat as many waves of enemies as you possibly can. Um, I got through all the waves, and it said like, "All right, good job, back to town." Um, and when I got back to town, it opened up a boss fight in there. And it seems like I just need to go back through the waves again to get to the boss fight. Mm -hmm. But something seemed to have happened, like an event happened in that expedition. And it basically, (laughs) I've not had this happen in this game before. Uh, so I, I took, I took the game's advice to heart. I went in and the background changed and it said that there was like a, a, a different effect in the air. And okay. all four of my party members said, we should run right now. <laughs> I'm hoping you did. I ran right away. Like I, <laughs> I went through one, one round uh, before I was able to figure out how to look at the effects. And it was basically <clears throat> my team got debuffed. The enemies got largely buffed. I got the hell out of there. Okay. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to fight that boss fight at some point, um, but that was definitely not the run to do it on. No, um, definitely not. Yeah, and I, I I, really need to spend a little bit of time going in the dungeon, getting as many heirlooms as I can, getting back out, and starting to build up my, my buildings in town, because I have not spent as much time doing that in this run as I have in my previous runs. Yeah. Um, and that's starting to that's starting to affect my team because I can't I can only throw one set of people in the uh, the recovery places and that's yeah. not working when I have like twenty people in my roster. So Yeah. Yeah. Building back up, challenge still accepted gonna beat this thing somehow yep. and props to uh, fifth horseman in uh, discord who says he's finished it a number of times and actually uh said that the jester um if you're listening to we rogue like it a class that was impenetrable impenetrable for us um he gave a couple of good tips that i thought were really good um handy yeah that's over in the we rogue like a channel right now um some some good info about uh, darkest dungeon that i think is gonna help me a lot yeah, did you um, hear Alex Navarro's uh, latest declaration this week? No. Nobody has ever read the Dune novels before. <laughs> oh, I believe that, yeah. Hey, Jeez. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I have already accepted that and defeated that challenge at the age of 13, so don't okay. you start with me. There we go. Okay, so one one half TVGP has already defeated yes. a Navarro challenge. <laughs> it's, it's on my shoulders. Um, next game, there was a, a patch that came out for Toji Merrill back in the groove. Um, mm-hmm. Fixed a lot of frame rate issues, fixed a lot of trophy and achievement issues. That's out now for most of the platforms, I believe. Um, played a, a little bit of it just to see if it frame rate is largely fixed. A little bummed because on a on this run I'm on, I had gotten to f- level zero, which unlocks a trophy but i don't have that trophy because i'm not on that level yeah um so that's that was um that's fine <laughs> it's a small team there's like six of them so yeah things are gonna happen and um, they are communicating very clearly on social media platforms what is going on so e- yes on that that's a really good point they their patch I notes did, were good they communicate a lot um, i did love their explanation for the uh, pacifist bug <laughs> yeah so this is really this is why game dev is hard this is i've totally forgot about this there's a, a trophy and achievement in the game that's called pacifist basically don't destroy don't pop any earthlings throughout an entire run which is really pretty easy because you don't get a ton of weapons that are 
you don't get a ton of offensive abilities. Mm -hmm. Um, And people were running through and doing it and knocking the trophy. And they were finding, the developers were finding, that this one enemy had a tendency to walk off the side of the level, and which will kill the enemy, but it would also consider that enemy having been killed by you. So, therefore, you can't get the trophy. Um, So that's... That's one of those ones where they found it and they're like, oh, oh okay, yeah, all right, that's crazy. We're going to fix that. That's That should not happen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but last but not least, uh, it's the start of a new season in Destiny 2, a season of the Drifter slash uh, Joker's Wild from the, the annual pass comes out. Um, played a little bit with the TVGP alumnus, the Hannah. We finished the campaign. Um, both had a lot of fun. I liked seeing a lot of that stuff. Uh, over again, especially the cutscene that happens after the game that teases you about everywhere we've gone since then, um, except for the last thing. We still don't know what that is. Um, so that was fun. Probably keep sort of marching our way through that stuff. Um, so Season of the Drifter and Joker's Wild have started now, uh, this past week. Um, and one of the things that they introduce are Ooh, I don't remember what the bounties are called. They're like supercharged bounties or something like that. Basically, if you're level 50, they give you five bounties. They're super easy to do. Each one of them drops two light level 640 items. Um, Mm -hmm. And then you can use them or infuse them, whatever. Um, uh, Friend of the show, Maximus Prime, started at 518 in 90 minutes had all five of those bounties done and is now 640. Um, Handy. That's really great. I would really like to see Bungie do this for every time the light level expands. Like the new cap is 700. Um so it doesn't you know, nobody gets all the way to the top immediately. But it's enough to make it competitive for the new content. Right. And if you the worst is when, you know, I'm level 661 now. Um, the worst thing is when someone starts and they're like, oh, well, I didn't play Black Armory because they didn't were interested in it or what they didn't have the annual pass or whatever. The worst is like, well, I'm light level 400. What can we do? And it's like nothing. And you can't do any of the new content. That's the worst. Yeah. Um, so very happy they did that. Very happy that worked. Um, they added a bunch of cool stuff, and I'm going to do my best un- to explain the loop that's happening here, because it's really interesting. So, they changed Gambit a little bit, Vanilla Gambit. Um, before, what would happen is Gambit matches would take so long, and often teams would purposely, if it looked like it was going to go to a third round, teams would purposely lose just to end it after two rounds. Yeah. Um, what they've done is the third round is now sudden death. The primeval has spawned. Everyone has full supers. You have your bunch of ammo. Just whoever kills it first wins. That's really great. Um, as part of this, they've introduced Gambit Prime. So this is the one of the two new modes that they've introduced here. Gambit Prime is a one-round mode that is just fill your moats up to 100 the primeval spawns uh you need to take down uh the envoys which are these wizards that accompany it take down three of those this well of light spawns stand in there to do a bunch of damage to the boss sort of rinse and repeat once the primeval has spawned um so fundamentally a little bit different but we'll get into why it's a lot different here in a minute um The map that they have out for right now is way bigger than the other Gambit maps in a a pretty positive way. They're adding another one in next week? Yeah, next week. Um, Because they're doing the same thing they did as last season where they're sort of every week, maybe every half a week, there's a new content coming out. Um, Next week is Thorn, which is great, on the 12th. Uh, Also the day I get the Division 2, so I'm not going to be worrying about Thorn right away. No, um, don't talk about that game. I need to budget for that game. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going to be like a week behind you. <laughs> no, I know. Um, so Gambit Prime 
is there, has loot drops, has invasions, has all the normal stuff. Um, but as part of that, you're getting these synths. And there's stuff like collector synth, reaper synth, stuff like that. Um, and they look like the drifter's coins. Early on, what the drifter gives you is a um, synthesizer. What you do is you put these synths in there, and it generates a moat. And you're going to take that moat into the other mode that they've added called the reckoning, which is sounds crazier than it is. Um, but in this mode, you actually go into the thing that the drifter <clears throat> carries behind a ship. It's like this giant crackling planet thing. And what you find in there is a horde mode and uh, a true horde mode, to, to be clear, which is really great. Um, you're actually taking those things that you earned from Gambit Prime and you're wagering those in The Reckoning. Um, okay. So put two down, do a certain amount of waves, get four back kind of thing. Well, no. It's cooler. What happens is you'll put, uh, let's say, like, you'll put the weakest moat into a bank that's at the beginning of, of uh, The Reckoning. The great thing they did, thank you, Bungie, for learning this lesson. If you wager a moat and you lose, you get that moat back from the bank. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's a wager, but okay. Yeah, and the wager term is sort of scary until you realize you can just get it back, which is great because some of the moats, some of the synths can be a little bit hard to get. Because um, some of the stuff you do, some of the ones you get are based on things you do in a Gambit Prime match. So like you collect and deposit a bunch of moats, you get a collector synth. You kill a bunch of uh, enemies, you get a reaper synth. Yeah. Um, so in the reckoning, let's say you uh, wager a the weakest level of um, Reaper synth in tier one. You finish it. It's just a a bunch of waves and then a boss at the end. At the end, gives you an armor piece mm -hmm. of the Reaper set, um, and there are four different sets. Tier two just came out. It is stupid hard <laughs> at this point. Um, it is six. 40 or 650 is the recommended level for tier 1. That's just a whole bunch of enemies, fill up your bar to 100%, kill the boss. Tier 2 is do that and then go to another room that where you start building a bridge where there are non-stop enemies and bosses spawning on you. I, I have not been able to get halfway across that bridge. Um, it, it's, it's very tough, which is great. Yeah. Um, so the the benefit of getting that gear is that's Gambit Prime gear. So by the, getting that gear, you go back in, you do better with Gambit Prime, you come back in, right. you cycle it back into the horde mode. Because what they've finally done is they finally introduced gear sets. So Gambit Prime gear has two and a half games later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, Gambit Prime gear has bonuses on it that helps you do better in Gambit Prime. The yep. more pieces you have and the stronger those pieces are, the best is going to be the Tier 3 one, which opens up end of next week, I think it is. Um, and at that point, you can there are bonuses for like, it's like 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So there are five bonuses on every piece of gear. Mm -hmm. um, and like the Reaper set, which is the one I really want, which is just you're killing regular enemies in, the, uh, in Gambit. The very first bonus when you get three pieces is when you hit a boss enemy that's not a primeval, you mark it, and the whole team does greatly increased damage to that enemy. So it's this cool passive thing, and a lot of the other ones are pretty similar. So you already have the loop figured out where go play some game at Prime, get a bunch of synths, go play the Reckoning, get a bunch of armor pieces, do better in game at Prime. Yeah. Um... One of my favorite things, too, in The Reckoning is when you finish a round of it, it just spits your team back out to the beginning of The Reckoning, where the bank is. And you can choose to just run it again. Yeah, you can run it with your team however you want. You don't have to go back to orbit and pick it again and go through that whole rigmarole. Um, so, so far, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying Gambit Prime because I enjoyed Gambit already. To me, it's, yeah. it's them trying to extend that mode a little bit further um i like the reckoning because 
I like horde modes a lot. Um, mm-hmm. We'll see what tier three has, but um, early on in in Joker's Wild, this stuff seems good, um, and and w- we obviously don't have all of it. Um, and they're squashing some bugs related to Gambit. So there's Vanilla Gambit is missing a couple maps at the moment because uh, blockers weren't spawning, which is hilarious. Um, but so far, I what they've given us <clears throat> seems pretty good. I think the real question is right now, if you don't enjoy Gambit, is Joker's Wild for you? I'm not sure because they didn't launch a raid. They're not launching a raid as part of this um, annual pass, which is great as this annual pass episode, which is great because that means I'll probably be able to get the seal and the the, the title for this one. Um, yep. lo- one of my larger issues is um, they're not launching more PvP maps. We haven't had a new PvP map in a really long time. Uh, it's been. A couple of months um i think that's a real bummer and i think that's i think i don't think that's inexcusable but i expect better of hey here's a brand new thing here's one map now another map you know a map a month as we're going through something like that or at least yeah one map per content drop i, I feel like that's not asking too much it'd be nice if there were two or three per content drop, but uh, I don't know all the work that goes into creating those. Um, so, so far, if you don't like Gambit... It might not be for you. Yeah, it might not be... not At least maybe not yet. I don't think... We haven't seen everything that, that uh, Joker's Wild has, of course, because it, it launches over three months. Yeah. Um, they have this new spring event called the Revelry that will ha- launch at the beginning of next month middle of next month something like that um on the the roadmap they have just something called arc week that's happening on april 9th i think i don't know what that is that could be potentially interesting um thorn looks like it's pve and pvp focused thorn the bonuses on it now that it's coming back look even crazier than before um which, which is insane um so it looks like there there will be plenty plenty of stuff, and it's to me it's tough because it's great that if you didn't play Black Armory or if you are like the Hannah and you're just picking it up now, get to level fifty, do those things. Now you're six forty. That's really great. Um, so you can skip Black Armory if you don't want to play if you didn't like the forges or you don't want to run the raid or anything like that. Um, it's great that you can just start with Gambit Prime and the Reckoning right away. But if you don't, I think one of the harder parts is if you don't like Gambit or Gambit Prime, to be clear, the Reckoning might not do anything for you because it's only going to give you better stuff for Gambit. Right. Like the the loop is still going to be there. And sure, it's going to give you some of the new weapons look all look really cool. And it seems like there are more um, curated drops this time, Mm -hmm. um, which is really great. But a lot of that stuff seems focused on Gambit Prime. So um, I'm hoping that they, over the next couple of weeks, they um, they start unveiling more stuff for either vanilla Gambit or some more PvE stuff. Um, PvP is in a really bad spot right now. The, the, the PvP team has been missing for months um, on Bungie's side, and I, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I hope they do something soon um yeah because pvp needs some love just overall um and i I don't know what they're gonna do but the pve side is is really stable and really solid um but yeah i'll be talking about joker's wild over the next uh next couple weeks or so as things get unrolled and unveiled and we start getting more tears and i i start getting my light level up because i got some really bad drops this week (laughs) Um, and just wasn't i i can't breach 661 has been my highest and i i can't breach that yet um and going into tier two of the reckoning which is 670 at 661 normally would be fine i am getting one-shotted by a lot of stuff so the the difficulty is there yeah and it's it's really nice i i like the 
I like when they put they sort of turn the difficulty up pretty significantly. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I'm playing this week, so let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of March 11th, 2019. One Piece World Seeker comes out on Friday for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, this is an anime game? Yeah, and I always keep meaning to start reading One Piece, but it's a lot like Naruto or Bleach, where it's like, <laughs> okay, you're going to start on this volume, and there are literally 500 after that, so get Have ready. Fun that. Yeah. yeah. And I hear, it's, I hear it's incredible. But it's I'd, the same. It's the same. Like you said, would recommend an anime to people. People yeah. like, oh, what's your favorite anime? And you're like, hmm. Well, let's see. I like Naruto. Yeah. Um, Seven hundred episodes. I like Bleach. Eight hundred uh, episodes. <laughs> I like Dragon Ball. Right. Five thousand like, episodes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well. Yeah. I, I don't know. I saw someone uh, talking about Cowboy Bebop. I think it was a an anniversary of something, or it was like maybe a Steve Bloom's birthday or something like that. And someone's like, "Oh, I should should I watch Cowboy Bebop? Like how long it is? How long is it?" Someone says, it's "Oh, it's episodes, not super it? long. It's just twenty six episodes." And I was just like, "Ah, uh, anime. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're so good." Well, it's like Akira though. Like the movie is like a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. But the the mangas, like, the movie covers like fifty percent of what's in the mangas, and the mangas are like, like yeah, it's two like five thick. volumes. <laughs> yeah. oh, so good. Uh, last yeah. but not least, Tom Clancy's The Division Two comes out on Friday, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, is it full stop out for everybody on Friday? Uh, it's or is also full stop for early you? access on the twelfth on Tuesday. There you go. Okay, yeah. so that's so, where the issues are. Yeah. So I'll be. I'm. I'm very interested to see, once I create the clan, whether or not that carries over to multiple platforms. If not, then, uh, you know, check on Moonpeer for the uh, the Xbox One clan at some point. Don't mind me while I just look at my budget. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to crunch some quick numbers here. Um, But I'm... I am... The Division 2 is probably the the most excited I've been uh, for a brand new release in a while. Especially after Ubisoft came out this week and they say, like... um, you know, before you get to the end game, you have to get through our forty-hour campaign, um, which is great. And then once you get through that, then the entire world changes and things get way harder and more difficult. And I was like, "Great, mm-hmm. great, let's do it." Yep, I'm ready. Bring it on. Let's let's roll. <laughs> yeah, like I am perfectly happy with that. And you know what? The Division One was a fantastic game. I need to put some solid time into that because I still have that thing installed. Yeah, I've got all the achievements from the base game. I'm probably never going to get any of the underground achievements anymore. Like, I'm not going to get to max level and all that. Mm. There is a survival mode and an achievement for escaping the survival mode. I do not have that achievement. That's the stuff. So maybe this week I've got some division in my future to try and get that survival achievements ticked off. Yeah, there you go. Because something tells me I'll need the space to install Division 2. It's a little big. (laughs) Yeah. All right, let's move on to news stories. Square Enix has announced a Octopath Traveler mobile prequel. Um, this is notable, I, I think, primarily because for me, when you hear like mobile prequel, it's going to be some sort of stripped-down experience. It has the same graphics engine as the one on Switch. Um, mm-hmm. That cool Wasn't it- HD 2.2D game, whatever they were calling it. Wasn't it UE as well? I think. Yeah, it's uh, Unreal Engine 4, I believe. So, um, hopefully, I mean, we know phones can run UE now based on Fortnite, based on PUBG. Yeah. So. What was that big, um, oh, what was that big iOS game? Are early? you talking about the sword game that the Shadow Complex people put out? Yeah. Infinity Blade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, to me, I think that was one of the first Unreal was, phone games. It was. Yeah. And it was mind blowing how good that thing looked. Yeah. I installed it, played it for about ten minutes. I was like, I need to stop. Yeah, I can't keep playing this. 
Yeah, those just got delisted, unfortunately. Yep. So, it's a um, the only thing I can think of with that is a music licensing. Uh, I think it was the 64-bit transition. It's iOS oh, trans yeah. trans uh, transition from 32-bit to 64-bit, and like everyone had to go back and redo their stuff. And understandably, yeah. a bunch of developers are like, I can't afford that. Mm-hmm. No, so. they can afford it. They just didn't want to do it. That's the difference here. Yeah, I think I think for someone like Chair, it's like, hey, if we if we do all this work, you guys aren't going to buy it. So no one no one's going to buy a brand new copy of Infinity Blade Four. I think was the last one. <laughs> Dude, the fourth one was a free, they're like from two onwards. They were free to play games. That makes more sense. Yeah, I, I, and I'm pretty sure Chair is kind of owned by UE. But oh, let's move on. Yeah, I think did Epic buy? I think Epic did buy Chair when yep. the first game got super big. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of small developers, stories: The Path of Destinies is going to land on Xbox One this month. Um, I. <laughs> I wanted to bring this up because I, I really, really, really like this game. Um, and if someone is looking for sort of a fun hack and slash that has multiple branching paths in your story um, mm-hmm. and gets really crazy uh, at some points, uh, I it's not the best hack and slash, but it, it's certainly really charming. It's a cool small team. It just reminds me of any of the last two trophies on PS4, but it's... Oh. It's a really cool and it's a really fun game. Uh, was that? I'm not gonna lie. It sounds like that's one of those games where it's pick a buzzword out of a hat to name your game. Stories of destinies. Stories, the path of destinies. Yeah. 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 It's it's not the best name, but Battle Chases Night Wall. You know. <laughs> that's another one where it's like a little bit of word soup. <laughs> um, I have not yet moved Moon's thing off the camera because this is what moon looks like right now <laughs> look skype problems man God, skype get your poops together uh next news story we're finally finishing the saga we have been talking about for years at this point um vivendi has sold off its final ubisoft shares yay ubisoft has goodness removed the yoke of vivendi um and they are, I was going to say they're free again, but they they still have other shareholders. So, Yeah, I'm pretty sure a big reason why they managed to avoid this was because didn't they take a big chunk of change from Tencent as well? Uh, I feel like everybody lately has, like Bungie has, mm-hmm. Blizzard's working with them. Yeah. Activision probably is. Because I know there's talk about Siege hitting the China market soon, so that should be interesting. Yeah, that was, boy, that was the source of a lot of controversy a couple months ago. Yep. That we didn't really report on because it sounded like that was going to get reversed really quickly, and it did. Mm hmm. Ta da. Uh, let's talk about E3 2019. EA is not no, going to be there. No, no, let's not. Moving on. Yep. Yeah. EA is, is the next in line to say, uh, we're not going to have a press conference there. Sorry. See you later. <laughs> did they have a press conference or did they just have the EA Play experience? They did, did they kind both of did last a press year. Conference? Yeah, they they sort of had one of those. Really, don't that that dude in the shiny suits came out. The guy who looks like a a Bond villain um, came out on stage and talked about. Oh no, that was the one where the um, who was it? The kid came up first of all it was the cnc mobile one command conquer mobile yep, one i remember that one but there was also that kid that was like a pro gamer and he was just like a total d-bag on stage <sighs> the one who yeah he he won the the nfl i think it was the yeah the man something yeah yeah so I they mean, yeah you haven't they haven't done a proper press conference in years let's not shake bones yeah 100 percent. and i'm i mean it's interesting to see another company pull out of this and then say um hey we're gonna do ea play again at the same time so come see us um yeah so they're basically taking the one step that they needed to take they had the press conference slot and everything but i'm pretty wasn't their press conference held at the ea play event um i think it was yeah like the the ea play stage 
Yeah, so their biggest difference is now they're just not going to be dealing with the whatever that company, the Nightmare Company is called, that right. runs all of this stuff. Right. Yeah, that's fine. It was, yeah. it was a matter of time for EA. And I'm sure that they'll still have a state, like a show floor presence. Um, I would be surprised if they don't. Yeah, and it, it seems more like everyone is just going to have this sort of floor presence and then they'll own they all do their own Nintendo Direct sort of thing, you know, landing at the same time the show does. Um, yeah. yeah. Make, it, make, make the most, because the news media is still going to be there. The mainstream, yeah. the hashtag mainstream media is still going to show up because they still know what E3 is. Mm-hmm. They, they're probably not aware that Sony isn't going to be there. They're not aware that EA has decided not to do their press conference this year. Right. Because as far as they're concerned, EA is still there because they'll still have the stupid play event on. It's the biggest day, day of the year for gamers this year, and one company didn't mm-hmm. show up. I'm waiting for that story to be told. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, we've got uh, more and more rumors uh, swirling that uh, look like the uh, Xbox One S without a disc uh, is going to be coming this spring for $200. Mm-hmm. That needs to lose a uh, hundred dollars off that price tag. Yeah, I feel like two hundred bucks during holiday season is probably an easy buy. No, I, no, they need to lose a hundred dollars off that price tag. If you, I like the PlayStation exclusives. Sony gonna Sony. They've made some bad moves these past couple of years. The, how much is the PlayStation Four now? The Pro. Let's say the Pro. I um, I don't know. Let's look. Amazon PS4 Pro. It's a good question. I actually don't know. It is four hundred dollars. Okay, and the X is still retailing at five hundred. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Uh, PlayStation 4 regular is probably going to be retailing at about maybe what three. Xbox One X is four hundred for a, like a special bundle. The Fallout 76 bundle. Uh, that's one of them if you'd like to buy one, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so PS4 Slim X. is $300. Okay, and the S is probably around about 300 as well, the current S. Um, probably. You're going all digital, so you're going to depend on Amazon to sell this. GameStop ain't going to carry any of them. If they do, you're lucky. Mm, GameStop might actually because it's GameStop and they're struggling at the moment, but... If they drop this for 200 it's a smart decision. If they drop it for 150 to 100 it's a killer decision. Because then you're taking out your nearest competitor by $200. You're sure. forcing Sony to make a move that they wouldn't be forced to make otherwise. Yeah, but I, I think when you look at the streaming-only Xbox One, I think that's the price point for that. I think, you the, think the streaming goes 100, digital 200. Yeah, because I think when you're it's streaming, it's just like, look, here's a set top box has none of the Xbox hardware in it. You know, it's not it's not the the full experience. When you look at the 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 download on the, the discless S, um, then I think you're looking at like, look, it's the you don't have to buy discs, you don't have to pop it in. Like you're all good. It's still an Xbox. It's still an Xbox One. It just you don't put anything in it. You know that sort of. That sort of marketing. Um, yeah, that's true. Fire but I think, Stick retails at 40 bucks. What's that? A Fire Stick goes at 40 to 50 depending on which Amazon Fire Stick you're interested in. Right. So, yeah, that plus the price of a controller thrown in, that's in like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, about 100 would be right for the streamer one. Yeah, you might be right. I yeah. think they, they should go 150 then for the digital only one, though. Yeah, and I I think the hard part is you look at a lot of these Xbox One S bundles, um, they're like two hundred and fifty bucks. So mm-hmm. for fifty more bucks, you can get a game or a couple of games, maybe Xbox Live for a couple of months. You can buy used games and toss them in your your thing. So I think I think if that if it's at the two hundred dollar price, that's a solid price, especially for the holidays. But the they need to communicate, I think, to John Q. Street Fighter fan about why, only. yeah, like why this is the one you want to buy versus the X or the S or the streaming one or 
Yeah, and Whatever. may we also recommend that you take a glance at Game Pass, which is a digital download service available from right. Microsoft for only ten dollars a month. Yeah, I, I feel like if if the streaming one doesn't come with some amount of time for a trial for like a a card in the thing that tells you where to get Game Pass, that's the digital one. You know, it has to. It, it has to. If not, like you've missed your largest opportunity. <laughs> well. We frequently talk about how much we believe Game Pass is a solid deal. It's a mm-hmm. solid amount to pay for the service that it's you a are steal, currently usually. being offered. <clears throat> Let me give you some real world talk here. Mm-hmm. Hashtag real talk. True story. <laughs> um, my wife works with a very young child of 16. I say mm-hmm. child because they're 16. So right. as far as I'm concerned, they're a kid. You're 21, you're still a kid. Right. That, that Get out of my yawn, etc. Et rabble, rabble. Um, they just got an Xbox. Okay. They don't know what games they like. Okay. They were asking for recommendations about what to buy to my wife, who, just like me, plays a whole bunch of video games. Right. And my wife's recommendation was, get Game Pass. That's a great con- You're that's a, great a 16 year old kid. You're working a job for, I'm assuming, minimal wage. Mm -hmm. Game Pass is affordable, and it gives you a variety to get your teeth into to figure out what you like and what you don't like. That's a good point. Two weeks later, guess what? Kid loves Game Pass. Right. It's 10 bucks. They can play a whole bunch of games that they love. Yep. They can find out what they like and what they don't like. It's It's a really great taster menu. Ah, that's right. So, again, folks... Game Pass is a solid deal. Yeah. I know you might want to buy games outright. That's fine. Do You do you. Game Pass is a good backup option. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to questions here. T-Bomb Rocks uh, asked a question. Throughout 2019, the follow... Let's... So, he's asking, throughout 2019, what are the chances the following studios will be acquired by Xbox? First one is IO Interactive. Mm, no. They've just made a big deal with Warner Brothers. I think they're okay for a while. Yeah, I, to me that seems I'd say like twenty percent. But Microsoft could still scoop them up. But I think the amount of money it would take them, it would take Microsoft to pull them away from Weeby would probably be too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah Turtle Rock is about right. Uh, does Turtle Rock exist anymore? I think I think they're working on their next thing. Um, once they said they were done with. Um, Evolve. They said, "All right, we're putting this thing to bed. You guys don't want to play it anymore. We are working on our next thing." I think I'm, I'm going to put them as ten percent. If we'll continue this percentages, if it's okay with you, but sure, I'll knock them at ten percent because at the end of the day, they haven't made anything worthwhile recently. I would say that would be an eighty percent from me because I think I think if you can give Turtle Rock money. And you can give them uh, some somebody uh, from a I think a high level game design mentorship standpoint. I mm-hmm. think Turtle Rock probably has fifteen great ideas for games. You have somebody from Microsoft, sorry, Xbox Game Studios, um, to try and take some of these ideas to get to the point where they can become more firm and and sort of start building you want a closer in there yeah and i think you can have someone who's been in the industry forever drive them to a successful game built on their strong benefits i i think you could make a winner there but from microsoft standpoint is the juice worth the squeeze is all that work worth it's definitely worth a new Left 4 Dead quality game, but it's not. it might not be worth chancing on getting another Evolve. Honestly, you know? I think if they, if, if they had made a really good game that had come out in the past... I loathe to say this, 10 years, mm-hmm. they would be right up there. Right. Unfortunately... Uh, since Left 4 Dead 1, they put out the DLC for Left 4 Dead 2. Yep. They put out the DLC for Left 4 Dead 1, the Sacrifice DLC. Oh, and right. they put out Evolve. Right. That is it. 
They and it's a bummer. Put any other game out. Because Evolve was clearly one of those games where it's like, alright, we're going to have multiple season passes, we're going to do the thing that Rainbow Six Siege figured out, which is we're going to keep supporting this game over the, the real long haul, but mm-hmm. it just never came together for them. It Honestly, for the, if they can get them for a steal, which you will probably be able to buy Turtle Rock for these days. No, probably. that's Turtle Rock. I don't know who If they can get them for them. a steal, it's private. Private. Okay. Interesting. Um, so it is owned by people. It's not owned by a corporation. So if they can get them for a steal, then they might pick them up. But I don't. I love Turtle Rock. I don't think they have the legacy needed to yeah make it a purchase. Yeah, I don't. I agree. Um, what's the next one here? Typhoon. Uh, this is the one I had to look up. Um, they are launching a game this year called. Journey to the Savage Planet. Uh, you can find more at savageplanetgame.com. Um, I honestly don't know anything about this game. Um, I just watched the trailer and I feel like I still uh, don't entirely know. Um, uh, the the game was uh, announced at 2018's Game Awards. Oh, okay. The big thing for this is this is former EA and Ubisoft employees. This mm. is a small studio formed by former EA and Ubi guys. Okay. Um, Alex Hutchinson is one of the co-founders. He's the interesting di- director of Far Cry Four. Okay. All right. So there's some so, promise there. Yeah, 27 employees. Mm. Yeah. They might pick them up, but let's see what they got first. I think is what it might be a, a case of. Yeah, I, I almost feel like with with how Xbox is building their, their stable right now, they might have scooped up Typhoon two years ago when they started the studio. Uh-huh. But now that they're coming out with the game, it's probably better to say, all right, we're going to wait. We're going to see what they come out with. If it's a real super hit, then maybe maybe that's the right time to buy them. Yeah, or even if it shows potential, like this stupid... Um the two studios who've only made one game really, the State of Decay people and the Mask game people um, those are I can't remember what it's called, We Happy Few the people who oh, made that right. game that's two studios with distinctive styles and flavors to their games so mm. let's see what they've got first so I'm going to put them at 10% yeah, I, I think that's fair I mean that that seems pretty pretty unlikely uh, next one is Housemark, which is a game I haven't heard of in a while. Or a studio I haven't uh, heard of in a while. Rings a bell. Super Stardust. Um, let's look at the some of the other stuff they've come out with lately. They have a beta open right now looking at their site. Rezogun, Alien Nation, which is a, an okay hit for them. Next Machina was came out. 2017, but that was the game that made them stop making the games they currently make. <laughs> yeah, isn't this the same people who came out and said it's pointless making console games because we don't make our money anymore? No, they said it's pointless for us to stop to keep making arcade games because nobody's buying them anymore. Like Resogun and and all those games are very much like traditional arcade games. Yeah, but no one wants those anymore, which is sort of a bummer. Yeah. I I feel like that's pretty unlikely of a purchase. <sighs> Cuz I don't I don't know what their I don't know what their strengths are now. Um Yeah. And to be honest, they have a very good relationship with Sony. Mhm. Look at their published games list. Yep. The majority of their publishers is Sony Interactive Entertainment. Yep, PS3, oh, PS4 wait. exclusive stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is one of those, another one of those small studios that the the stuff they've come out with hasn't been so huge to scoop them up, but it might mm-hmm. be big enough to try and court them to maybe do an exclusivity deal on your platform. Yeah, um, do what Insom- they did with Insomniac and um, oh, what's that game called? Oh, uh, Soda. it's just on the tip of my tongue. Sunset Overdrive. That's the one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's more like, it's like, look, we don't want to own you. You don't want us to buy you. But we do want your game. Yeah. Uh, and lastly on his list, Blue Point. Um, this mm. is an interesting one. I, I'm firing this up here to see what they have done other than remastering stuff. Um, and it's all remastering stuff. Um, I, I would say that's almost a 0% because I feel like from Blue Point's standpoint, you wouldn't want to just remaster stuff for one platform. Mm, true, but if you have a solid studio that's really good at remastering stuff mm-hmm. and you're in the process of trying to build a next generation platform that, oh, I don't know, maybe you want two generations worth of backwards compatibility included right. in there, they might be the studio to pick up to handle all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the the thing for me that's... This would be an easy question. I think if if Microsoft wasn't doing their cloud-based and their streaming stuff that is like the worst kept secret right now, Bluepoint would be an easy purchase to say, take Gears of War 5, put it on Switch. Just mm-hmm. figure it out. I don't care how it happens. Yeah. But I think when you look at their cloud-based stuff, you work with your already existing BFF Nintendo and you say hey we've got this streaming stuff just have people stream Gears 5 to their Switch and it looks the same as it does on your Xbox One um, so I think at that point someone like Blue Point, who's a great company and they've done incredible work you think they might be going redundant with the times? not necessarily but I think with, an, with what Microsoft is probably going to push heavily on the streaming side that might not be a good fit for Microsoft right now but I'm I'm sure that there's still, Sony obviously still will, people will still want to bring Wii U stuff up to the Switch or bring Switch stuff to other platforms, that's where Bluepoint is really strong um, Yeah, make a Mario Odyssey for the Xbox One X please Yeah, Thank you. there you go. Breath of the Wild 4K HDR, yes please I just want more people to play Breath of the Wild because it's really good. I want to buy it, but it's still full price. Yeah, that's the worst part is Nintendo games are always full price. Forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jerks. Like, we have a Switch in this house now. I still, I've played a couple of rounds of Tetris 99. Yep. I have not touched it otherwise because it's like, I kind of want to play Breath of the Wild, but yeah. it's still $60. Yeah. Grr. <laughs> Um, a skewed one says, not a question per se, but I think the other VR rhythm game you meant to name is Beat Saber, not Beat Hazard. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Beat Hazard is the non-VR rhythm game. Beat Saber is the... I, I should have remembered Beat Saber is the VR one because it looks like you're holding lightsabers. Yep. And didn't they get in trouble for calling them lightsabers until they had to patch out that description? Probably. The game? Yeah, that seems like a one dude made a VR game and just called it lightsabers, and then it got really big. And Lucas was like, "Hey man, Disney, sorry." Was like, "Hey man, yeah, let's come on. You know mm. you can't do this." <laughs> Here's a C and D for your template. Now let's just uh, get this out of the way. Yeah. Name change, please. Uh, and last question here is from Oddball in Discord. Says I play almost any kind of game genre. Uh, uh, RPGs like uh, Final Fantasy VII, but I never play them till the end because I don't like the round-based fighting system or the random fight encounters. But now I found an RPG that I really like, Nino Kuni 2. Uh, I like the fighting system, uh, uh, base building, side quests, and how I move over the map is really my kind of style. Which other RPGs uh, has a similar fighting system uh, that I could really like? Of course, I would really appreciate some kind of side quest system or techniques like the city building in Nino Kuni 2. Okay, uh, before JRPG Master jumps in on the question sure. here, you can help me fill in this one. Okay. I don't know what the combat is, but if you want some really good in-depth building stuff in your game, mm-hmm. go play Dark Cloud 1 and 2. That was the recommendation from Monkey Senior. Was I wouldn't recommend Dark Cloud 1 as much because it's it, it has not aged well. Dark Cloud Mm -hmm. 2 has a PS4 version. Uh, Oddball is located in the UK, so it's called Dark Chronicle, um, which it was fun remembering that. Um, Mm -hmm. So Dark Cloud 2 got a remake. Sorry, 
a remaster on PS4. It's like 15 bucks, I think, which is a steal for the amount of content that game has in it. Um, 1080p, 60 frames, the whole uh, thing. The game looks... Oh, the, the art style at the time, at least, was amazing. Yeah, so probably still holds interesting up. Interesting to see how it looks now. Um, and my other suggestion, if you like the combat system, it has side quests and the story is completely bonkers. Yep. Um, give Eternal Sonata a try. Yeah, Eternal Sonata is crazy. Yeah. It has a action-based combat system. It doesn't have the base building, unfortunately, but the combat is all action-based and movement-based, and there's a whole light and darkness thing going on during the combat, which is really cool. And it has one of the craziest stories ever because it's essentially the dreamland of a dying man. Yeah, Chopin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... So, and not to mention, it's very much Viva Piñata-esque in the fact that it is bright colors, it's gorgeous the art style is amazing in it yeah. and that is one of those hd games that really speaks volumes for hd yeah that's a good that's a good recommendation um my recommendation actually was uh the recently released tales of vesperia definitive edition um there are a lot of tales games out there but i feel like vesperia is probably the best intro it has the limbs system which is their basically their real-time quasi fighting game battle system which i think works really well in that one and it lays the groundwork for it getting a little more complicated and complex in further sort of later games um what's going on sorry i'm I'm just laughing because when you said there are a lot of tales games i immediately thought of the rifleman's creed there are a lot of tales games but this is my tales game i will love it like a tales game tales of Vesperia is is my tales game um the definitive edition version is really good. It came out on everything. Um, came out on Switch too, so it's PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch. Um, so if you have it, if you have one of those consoles um, yep. or a PC, it, it came out there, and that that would be the one I would recommend. It, I think, Dark Cloud Two slash Dark Chronicle and Tales of Vesperia are probably the most like Nino Kuni Two. Um, especially Dark Cloud has that city building and has a. A cool golf game where you play it in the dungeons you were just exploring in. How that game yep. is so good. Um, I've they really are older games. That's the only thing worth mentioning is like you're talking Dark Cloud One was what like ninety nine two thousand early PS two, like and so they may not have aged as well. Sure. Um, do, 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 Eternal Sonata was early three sixty, so yep. be prepared for going back for that. But yeah. I, those games are masterpieces in their own right. Yeah. I wish I could recommend Nino Kuni 1 as much as I could 2, but 1 eh, just rough in a lot of areas and it just never never really n- never really came together like 2 did. Yeah. Which is surprising because that same studio made Dark Cloud 1 and 2. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, all right, that's our episode this week. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Uh, everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Game Club, uh, it's the last week of Game Club. We're playing Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, uh, which is like two or three hours long, so you still have plenty of time. Um, Patreon, uh, actually, Patreon, if you're a patron, you can go vote on the next game. Uh, there's a very clear winner right now, but... You can still cast your vote. Don't worry. Um, you know your vote matters. Um, uh, don't forget join uh, Patreon.com slash e one m one. The ones are numbers. I forgot to put the URL in there. Uh, help us fund the show. Help you get some really cool behind the scenes and extra episodes uh-huh. uh, and early access. Old dog new flicks. We'll be having an episode of that coming out in a couple of weeks here uh, at the end of the month. Uh, the final episode of season two for Dynamic Soundtrack will be coming out at the beginning of next month as well. Um, and I'll figure out what to do on the in between for uh, all you DST fans on, uh, just on Patreon. Um, I think that's it. Go join the Discord server, discord.me slash TVGP. And we'll yep. see you all next week. Bye. I hope oh, you guys can't hear that back in the background. I can't hear her. Okay. Well, I can hear this thing. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Yes, yeah. exactly. I got like four titles, dude. Yeah, I have five, but like I feel like I feel like we didn't have a lot this week. No, because we're both dead on our feet because it's one of those weeks. It's true. 
I almost swore again. The show is not over until I hit stop. The show is not over until I hit stop. The show is not over until I hit stop. I feel like you need a label maker and just put that on your monitor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually, I've just realized I'm, I, now I've moved your camera, like my, the Skype window, because it does the weird half screen, so I don't click onto Skype anymore. Right. I have like the preview window right underneath my actual camera, so when I'm looking at you, I'm looking towards the uh-huh. camera, which should help a little bit. Yeah. And I, maybe I can put a note between the two saying the show isn't over until Right, I just open stop. up Notepad. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, hit me okay. with your titles. Uh, the Cold is Real. Uh, my personal vote for this week is use them or infuse them. Oh, that's so good. Two and a half games later and get out of my yawn because I meant to say yard and said yawn by accident. Uh, use them or infuse them is really good. Get out of my uh-huh. yard slash yarn. Get out of my yarn is good too. I really like use them or infuse them. Uh, honestly, the second you said that, I was like, well, we've got a show title. I'll circle it. That's an easy one this week. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 594 for March 11th, 2019. Use them or infuse them. Get that light level. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for watching us live this week. We always appreciate it, and we love you. Yeah, we'll see. and I hope Daylight Saving Times haven't messed with you too much. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's maybe why not a lot of people are on this week. They're like, oh, God, it's TV. Oh, no, we missed it. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Bye. See you, folks. And we can stop recording. <laughs>